Chapter 18 The Cave In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful. All praises and thanks be to Allah, who has sent down to his slave Muhammad the book, this Quran, and has not placed in it any crookedness. He has made it straight, to give warning to the disbelievers of a severe punishment from him, and to give glad tidings to the believers in the oneness of Allah, who work righteous deeds, that they shall have a fair reward in paradise. They shall abide there for ever. And to warn those Jews, Christians, and pagans who say, Allah has begotten a son. They have no knowledge of such a thing, nor had their fathers. Monstrous is the word that comes out of their mouths, that he took sons and daughters. They utter nothing but a lie. And perhaps you would kill yourself, O Muhammad, in grief over their footsteps from their turning away from you, because they do not believe in this narration, the Quran. Indeed, we have made that which is on earth as an adornment for it, in order that we may test mankind as to which of them are best in deeds. And indeed, we shall make all that is on the earth a bare dry soil, without any vegetation or trees and so forth. Do you think that the people of the cave and the inscription were a wonder amongst our signs? Remember when the young men fled for refuge from their disbelieving folk to the cave, they said, Our Lord, bestow on us mercy from yourself, and facilitate for us our affair in the right way. Therefore we covered up their sense of hearing, causing them to go into a deep sleep in the cave for a number of years. Then we raised them up from their sleep, that we might test which of the two parties was best at calculating the time period that they had stayed. We narrate to you, O Muhammad, their story with truth. Truly, they were young men who believed in their Lord Allah, and we increased them in guidance. And we made their hearts firm and strong with the light of faith in Allah, and bestowed upon them patience to bear the separation of their kith and kin and dwellings. When they stood up and said, Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Never shall we call upon any God other than Him. If we did, we would indeed have uttered an enormity in disbelief. These, our people, have taken for worship gods other than Allah. Why do they not bring for them a clear authority? And who does more wrong than he who invents a lie against Allah? The young men said to one another, And when you withdraw from them, and that which they worship, accept Allah, then seek refuge in the cave. Your Lord will open a way for you from his mercy, and will make easy for you your affair, and will give you what you will need of provision and dwelling. And you might have seen the sun, when it rose, declining to the right from their cave and when it set, turning away from them to the left, while they lay in the midst of the cave. That is one of the proofs, evidences, and signs of Allah. He whom Allah guides is rightly guided, but he whom he sends astray, for him you will find no guiding friend to lead him to the right path. And you would have thought them awake while they were asleep. And we turned them on their right and on their left sides, and their dog stretching forth his two forelegs at the entrance of the cave as a guard at the gate. Had you looked at them, you would certainly have turned back from them in flight, and you would certainly have been filled with awe of them. Likewise, we awakened them from their long, deep sleep, so that they might question one another. A speaker from among them said, How long have you stayed here? They said, We have stayed perhaps a day or part of a day. They said, Your Lord alone knows best how long you have stayed here. So send one of us with this silver coin to the town, and let him find good lawful food, and bring some of that to you. And let him be careful, and let no man know of you. For if they come to know of you, they will stone you to death, or abuse and harm you, or turn you back to their religion, and in that case you will never be successful. And thus we made their case known to the people, that they might know that the promise of Allah is true, and that there can be no doubt about the hour. Remember, when the people of the city disputed among themselves about their case, they said, Construct a building over them. Their Lord knows best about them. Then those who prevailed over their affair said, We indeed shall build a place of worship over them. Some say there were three, the dog being the fourth among them. Others say they were five, the dog being the sixth, guessing at the unseen. Yet others say they were seven, the dog being the eighth. Say, O Muhammad, 
My Lord knows best their number. None knows them but a few. So debate not about their number, except with a clear proof which we have revealed to you, and do not consult any of the people of the Scripture, Jews and Christians, about the affair of the people of the cave. And never say of anything, I shall do such and such thing tomorrow, except with a saying, If Allah wills. And remember your Lord when you forget, and say, It may be that my Lord guides me to a nearer way of truth than this. And they stayed in their cave three hundred years, increased by nine more years. Say, Allah knows best how long they stayed. With Him is the knowledge of the unseen of the heavens and the earth. How clearly He sees and hears everything. They have no helper or protector other than Him, and He allows none to share in His decision and His rule. And recite what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, of the book, this Quran, of your Lord. Recite it, understand and follow its teachings, and act on its orders, and preach it to men. None can change Allah's words, and none will you find as a refuge other than Him. And keep yourself, O Muhammad, patient with those who call on their Lord, who remember their Lord with glorification, praising Him in prayers, and doing other righteous deeds morning and afternoon, seeking His face. And do not let eyes overlook them, desiring the pomp and glitter of the life of the world. And do not obey him whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance, one who follows his own lusts, and whose deeds have been lost. And say, The truth is from your Lord. Then whosoever wills, let him believe, and whosoever wills, let him disbelieve. Indeed, we have prepared for the polytheists and wrongdoers a fire whose walls will surround the disbelievers in the oneness of Allah. And if they ask for help or some relief, they will be granted water like boiling oil that will scald their faces, terrible the drink and terrible the resting place. Indeed, as for those who believe and do righteous deeds, certainly we shall not suffer to be lost the reward of anyone who does righteous deeds in the most perfect manner. For them will be gardens of eternity and paradise, where rivers will flow underneath them. There they will be adorned with bracelets of gold, and they will wear green garments of fine and thick silk. They will recline there on raised thrones. How superb is the reward, and what an excellent resting place! and put forward to them the example of two men. To one of them we gave two gardens of grapes, and we had surrounded both with date palms, and had put between them green crops and cultivated fields. Each of those two gardens brought forth its produce, and failed not in the least in it, and we caused a river to gush forth in the midst of them. And he who was in possession of the garden said to his companion, in the course of mutual talk, I have more wealth than you, and I am stronger in respect of men. And he went into his garden while in a state of pride and disbelief, unjust to himself. He said, I do not think that this will ever perish, and I do not think that the hour will ever come. And if indeed I am brought back to my Lord on the day of resurrection, I shall surely find something better than this when I return to him. His companion said to him, during the talk with him, do you disbelieve in him who created you out of dust, then out of a tiny drop, and then fashioned you into a man? But as for my part, I believe that he is Allah, my Lord, and I shall associate none as a partner with my Lord. It was better for you to say, when you entered your garden, that which Allah wills will come to pass. There is no power but with Allah. If you see me as less than you in wealth and children, it may be that my Lord will give me something better than your garden, and will send on your garden a torment from the sky, then it will be a slippery earth, or its water may sink deeper out of your reach. So his crops were encircled with ruin, and he remained clapping his hands with sorrow over what he had spent upon it, while it was all destroyed, and he could only say, Would I had ascribed no partners to my Lord! and he had no group of men to help him against Allah, nor could he defend or save himself. There, on the day of resurrection, the protection, 
power, authority, and kingdom will be for Allah alone, the true God. Allah is the best for rewards and the best for the final end. None has the right to be worshipped but He. And put forward to them an example of the life of this world. It is like the rain which we send down from the sky, and the vegetation of the earth mingles with it and becomes fresh and green. But later it becomes dry and breaks into pieces which the winds scatter, and Allah is able to do everything. Wealth and children are the adornment of the life of this world, but good righteous deeds that last are better with your Lord for reward and better in respect of hope. And remember the day we shall cause the mountains to pass away like clouds of dust, and you will see the earth as a leveled plain, and we shall gather them all together so as not to leave one of them behind." and they will be set before your Lord in lines as rows, and Allah will say, Now, indeed, you have come to us as we created you the first time. No, but you thought that we had appointed no meeting for you with us. And the book of deeds will be placed in the right hand for a believer in the oneness of Allah, and in the left hand for a disbeliever in the oneness of Allah. And you will see the criminals, polytheists, and sinners, fearful of that which is recorded in it. They will say, Woe to us! What sort of book is this that leaves neither a small thing nor a big thing, but has recorded it with numbers? And they will find all that they did placed before them. And your Lord treats no one with injustice. And remember when we said to the angels, Bow down to Adam. So they bowed down, except Satan. He was one of the jinn. He disobeyed the command of his Lord. Would you then take Satan and his offspring as protectors and helpers, rather than me, while they are enemies to you? What a miserable exchange! I never permitted Satan and his offspring to witness the creation of the heavens and the earth, nor their own creation. Nor was I to take the misleaders as helpers. And remember the day he will say, Call those so-called partners of mine whom you claim to be gods beside me. Then they will cry to them, but they will not answer them and an insurmountable barrier will separate them from each other. And the criminals, polytheists, and sinners shall see the fire and realize that they have to fall into it, and they will find no way of escape. And indeed, we have put forth every kind of example in this Koran for mankind. But man is the most quarrelsome of creatures. And what is there to keep back men from believing now, when the guidance this Koran has come to them, from asking forgiveness from their Lord, except that the ways of the ancients be repeated with them, all the torment be brought to them face to face? And we do not send the messengers except as givers of glad tidings and warners. But those who disbelieve dispute with false arguments in order to refute the truth. And they treat my proofs, signs, and revelations, and that with which they are warned, as jest and mockery. And who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the proofs, signs, and revelations of his Lord, but turns away from them, forgetting what deeds his hands have done? Truly, we have set veils over their hearts, lest they should understand this Koran, and in their ears, deafness. And if you, O Muhammad, call them to guidance, even then, they will never be guided. And your Lord is most forgiving, the owner of mercy. Were he to call them to account for what they have earned, then surely he would have hastened their punishment. But they have their appointed time, beyond which they will find no escape. And these towns such as Ard and Thamud, we destroyed when they did wrong, and we appointed a fixed time for their destruction. And remember when Moses said to his boy-servant, I will not give up traveling until I reach the junction of the two seas or until I spend years and years in travel. But when they reached the junction of the two seas, they forgot their fish, and it found its way into the sea. So when they had passed further on, beyond that fixed place, Moses said to his boy-servant, Bring us our morning meal. Truly, we have suffered much fatigue in our journey. He said, Do you remember when we sat by the rock? I indeed forgot the fish. None but Satan made me forget to remember it. It took its course into the sea in a strange way. Moses said, That is what we have been seeking. So they went back, retracing their footsteps. 
Then they found one of our slaves, to whom we had bestowed mercy from us, and whom we had taught knowledge from us. Moses said to him, May I follow you, so that you teach me something of that knowledge which you have been taught by Allah? He said, Indeed, you will not be able to have patience with me, and how can you have patience about a thing which you know not? Moses said, If Allah wills, you will find me patient, and I will not disobey you in any way. He said, Then, if you follow me, do not ask me about anything till I myself mention it to you. So they both proceeded, until, when they embarked onto a ship, he scuttled it. Moses said, Have you scuttled it in order to drown its people? Indeed, you have committed a thing most dreadful. He said, Did I not tell you that you would not be able to have patience with me? Moses said, Do not call me to account for what I forgot, and do not be harsh with me. Then they both proceeded till they met a boy, and he killed him. Moses said, Have you killed an innocent person who had killed no one? Indeed, you have committed a thing most dreadful. He said, Did I not tell you that you can have no patience with me? Moses said, If I ask you anything after this, do not keep me in your company. You have received enough apologies from me. Then they both proceeded, till, when they came to the people of a town, they asked them for food. But the people refused to entertain them. Then they found a wall about to collapse, and he set it up straight. Moses said, If you had wished, surely you could have received wages for it. He said, Now we must part company, but I will explain to you everything you could not hold patience with. As for the ship, it belonged to poor fishermen working the sea, so I wished to damage it, as there was a king coming after them who was confiscating every ship by force. And as for the boy, his parents were believers, and we feared in case he should oppress them by rebellion and disbelief. So we intended that their Lord should change him, for one better in righteousness and nearer to mercy. And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the town, and under it there was a treasure belonging to them, and their father was a righteous man, and your Lord intended that they should attain their age of full strength, and take out their treasure as a mercy from your Lord and I did not do it of my own accord. That is the interpretation of those things over which you could not keep patience with. And they ask you about Zul Karnain. Say, I shall recite to you something of his story. Indeed, we established him in the earth, and we gave him the means of everything. So he followed away, until, when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of black muddy water. And he found near it a people, Allah said by inspiration, O Zul Karnain, either punish them or treat them with kindness. He said, As for him who disbelieves in the oneness of Allah, who does wrong, we shall punish him, and then he will be brought back to his Lord, who will punish him with a terrible torment in hell. But as for him who believes in the oneness of Allah, and works righteousness, he shall have the best reward of paradise, and we shall speak to him mild words. Then he followed another way, until when he came to the rising place of the sun, he found it rising on a people for whom Allah had provided no shelter against the sun. So it was, and we knew all about Zul Karnain. Then he followed another way, until when he reached between two mountains, he found before them a people who scarcely understood a word. They said, O Zul Karnain, indeed Gog and Magog are doing great mischief in the land. Shall we then pay you a tribute, in order that you might erect a barrier between us and them? He said, The wealth, authority, and power in which my Lord has established me is better than your tribute. So help me with the strength of men. I will erect between you and them a barrier. Give me blocks of iron. Then, when he had filled up the gap between the two mountain cliffs, he said, Blow, until he had made it red as fire. And he said, Bring me molten copper to pour over it. So Gog and Magog were made powerless to scale it or penetrate it. Zul Karnain said, This is a mercy from my Lord, but when the promise of my Lord comes, he shall level it to the ground, and the promise of my Lord is ever true. 
and on that day when Gog and Magog will come out, we shall leave them to surge like waves on one another, and the trumpet will be blown, and we shall collect them all together. And on that day we shall present hell to the disbelievers, plain to view to those whose eyes have been under a covering from my reminder, this Koran, and who could not bear to hear. Do then those who disbelieve think that they can take my slaves, such as Jesus, son of Mary, as lords, gods, and protectors besides me? Indeed, we have prepared hell as an eternal abode for the disbelievers in the oneness of Allah. Say, O Muhammad, shall we tell you the greatest losers in respect of their deeds? Those whose efforts have been wasted in this life while they thought that they were acquiring good by their deeds. They are those who deny the proofs, signs, and revelations of their Lord and the meeting with Him in the hereafter. So their works are in vain, and on the day of resurrection we shall not give them any weight. That shall be their recompense, hell, because they disbelieved and took my revelations and my messengers by way of jest and mockery. Indeed, those who believe in the oneness of Allah and do righteous deeds shall have the gardens of paradise for their entertainment, where they shall dwell for ever. No desire will they have to be removed from there. Say, O Muhammad, to mankind, if the sea were ink for writing the words of my Lord, surely the sea would be exhausted before the words of my Lord would be exhausted, even if we brought another sea like it for its aid. Say, O Muhammad, I am only a man like you. It has been inspired to me that your God is one God Allah. So whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, let him work righteousness and associate none as a partner in the worship of his Lord.